Good morning, folks. I'm thrilled to be here today and I'm thankful to the Blackland Farm Managers Association for inviting me to introduce myself and talk a little bit about the future direction of the program. I'm going to try to have them advance my slides for me, so we'll see how this goes. As many of you know, Dr. Dunphy officially retired on May 1st. We overlap for a couple weeks, but I am his successor and really excited to be working in the state of North Carolina. So just a little bit about my background. I grew up in rural Illinois and went to the University of Illinois where our a keynote speaker, uh, is from, but I did both of my graduate degrees here in North Carolina at NC State. I worked largely with organic grain production and cover crops, but also with weed control and cotton, where I worked for Alan York, who of course provided an excellent example of how to be an effective extension specialist. One thing I realized doing my graduate degrees here is how fortunate we are in North Carolina to have such a strong extension system, which makes it a really fantastic place to work. In preparing to interview for this position and then subsequently interview, uh, interacting with other stakeholders as I began in the position, I've been able to identify some extension priorities for the program moving forward. Uh, some of the ones I want to highlight today, this summer I've really been trying to get out across the state, meet with county extension agents and meet with growers to understand what your applied research and extension expectations are for the soybean program. We've also invested a lot of effort over the past couple of months trying to update our soybean extension portal. Dominic mentioned the cotton portal. I'll highlight on the next slide our soybean extension portal. And one thing that Dr. Dunphy really laid a legacy of investing heavily in on-farm research, and that's something we'd like to continue to invest in in the soybean program. So I just want to highlight a couple things that we've added on our soybean extension portal, which you can access at the website up there, soybeans.ces.ncsu.edu. So many of you probably know the Soybean Producers Association led by Catherine Drake, the research coordinator, and NC State collaborated to release a soybean production guide, which we've posted on our soybean extension portal. We've posted our variety information. We've got links to the OBT website. We've got a link to the variety selection tool and also the variety information that Dr. Dumphy's developed can be found there. We've also added information about our soybean yield contest. So look for an updated submission form for the soybean yield contest in mid-August. We'll post it here on the portal. And you can also look up results from the past about 15 years of winners and other entries into the soybean yield contest so you can see what some of the production practices have been of the high yielding growers across the state. So our research portfolio this year, Dr. Dunphy committed to following through on some of the trials that the Soybean Extension Program has done for the past few years. So we're carrying those through this summer. And several of these have been ongoing for several years. So this winter we'll be able to have robust summaries from what we've learned for those trials. And then we'll be able to move into a new research portfolio in 2019. So what will that research portfolio look like? We, as I mentioned, we've been gathering a lot of stakeholder feedback about the research priorities they have for the soybean extension program moving forward. Some of the hot topics and areas that we'll focus on are foliar feeding of both macro and micronutrients, focusing on fundamental agronomic uh, considerations for early maturity group soybeans, threes and fours, we're also going to be looking at some studies where we're looking at early soybean planting dates, maybe mid-March all the way through late soybean planting dates in early August because we've interacted with growers that have expressed interest in seeing the insurance windows for beans both moved up for earlier planting and moved back for later planting. 
So one of the trials we would have discussed if we were able to go to the field today is the maximum dry land yield trial. That's a picture from the plots last night. They look fantastic. Um, planted on May 14th. And many of you are pr probably familiar with this trial that Dr. Dumphy started where you have a Cadillac treatment and then you're subtracting certain elements of that treatment to compare it to the Cadillac treatment. So a couple things that have been learned from this project over the past few years is in this specific product project, generally the 15 inch row spacing has out yielded the 30 inch row spacing. Generally a foliar fungicide applied at R2 or full flowering has increased yield. Um, inoculant has potentially had a slightly positive impact in, in some sites. And increasing the seeding rate above 120,000 seeds per acre has not provided a positive yield advantages in this trial. Another one of the new research projects that we've embarked on this summer that I'd like to highlight is some agronomic management trials in early maturity soybeans. I'd like to compliment some of our county extension agents who were proactive and started this research out in the east. I'm collaborating with them to make sure that we have uh, these research trials ran in the Piedmont as well as in South Carolina as we're collaborating uh, with the researchers on there to see more broadly how these maturity groups perform in our environment. Another project I wanted to highlight, Dr. Dumphy and Dr. Heinegger put this project together. We know from Dr. Heinegger that uniform emergence of corn seedlings has an effect on yield. But we wanted to test that hypothesis in soybeans. So for the past couple of years, they've been doing some work. That's the graph up here uh, on your top left. Days of emergence, so that's the first day is the first day the beans emerge. Um, one to four days of emergence yield on the y-axis. And what we generally see is that as days of emergence are delayed, soybean yields can decline. So knowing that, how do we change our management to try to achieve more uniform emergence? Of course, you can invest in planting equipment that might allow for more uniform emergence, but we also looked at seeding depth. How does seeding depth affect uniform emergence? How can planting date and soil temperature affect uniform emergence? And we have a county extension agent training coming up in Clayton, North Carolina. So we did a demo to see how seeding depth affected uniform emergence. And what we saw is that generally our shallower depths had more uniform emergence at our earlier emergence state. So we'll have to see how that affects yield. I think one of the really exciting things for the soybean extension program moving forward are all the opportunities that we have for collaboration at NC State. We're so fortunate at NC State to have such a diverse group of faculty working on applied extension questions and research priorities. We're also fortunate to have engaged agents across the state. We have our new area specialized grain agent positions that can provide for collaborative uh, research across the state. One of the collaborations I'd like to highlight is that the North Carolina Soybean Producers Association NC OBT under the direction of Ryan Heidegger and the Soybean Extension Program are going to be collaborating on an on-farm soybean strip trial variety program that can complement the data that's generated out of OBT. So in conclusion, I hope that you'll address me, come find me at lunch, call me, send me an email and let me know what some of your applied research priorities are specific to the Blacklands and what you'd like to see out of the Soybean Extension Program. Thank you very much for your time and the invitation to speak.